Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to the LSA's latest webinar, Pen Controller for IBEX, uh, a new platform for online experiment design. I'm David Robinson, the LSA's Director of Membership and Meetings, and we're going to wait just a few more minutes uh, to allow uh, the rest of the attendees to log on, and then we'll get started. So um, sit tight, and we'll be with you in uh, just another two or three minutes. Thank you. All right. Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the LSA's latest webinar, Pen Controller for IBEX, a new platform for online experiment design. My name is David Robinson. I'm the Director of Membership and Meetings for the Linguistic Society of America, the LSA, which is sponsoring this webinar. While I'm talking, you'll be seeing a brief slideshow about the LSA and what we do, and on the last Slide, you'll see some information about a special membership discount we have made available for participants in this webinar. I'd like to take just a few moments at the very beginning to let you know how the webinar will work and to make sure that you're familiar with the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, first of all, you will see a handouts widget on your control panel. Um, in there, we have a copy of the tutorial from the presenters that you can download at any time during the webinar. If you forget to do that, don't worry. We'll also have it available uh, on the LSA website uh, as well, and we'll send you a link to that. Um, also, you may have noticed that your microphones are muted. This is on purpose so that we don't get um, miscellaneous background noise from all of the participants. Um, we do, however, encourage you to ask questions um, both as we go along and during the question and answer period at the end of the webinar. And you'll see a questions widget. Um, that's what you can uh, use to ask your questions, and I'll forward them to the panelists. 
Um, finally, we've set up a couple of quick polls to gauge your familiarity with conducting experiments and with programming. They'll take just a few seconds to complete, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the first one now. So this one asks about how familiar you, you are with conducting experiments. So um, go ahead and vote, uh, and once most of you have voted, we'll um, show the responses to everybody. Looks like everyone has voted, so I'm going to close the poll, and now you should all be able to see the um, the poll results. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the second poll here. Okay. So here goes the second poll. Okay, great. Looks like everyone has voted, so I'm going to close this one and share the results. Okay, so uh, this concludes my portion of the webinar. I'd like to turn it over now to our panelists, uh, Drs. Florian Schwartz and Jeremy Zare from the University of Pennsylvania. So give me just a moment to... All right, gentlemen, you should be ready to go. Okay, so... Um, right, hang on, I'm going to have to close the poll results. Ah, okay. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Hello. The webcam is on and reasonably positioned. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and then, David, I will need to share my browser window. Is that... Do okay. you need to start that? Uh, it should be enabled for you. Um, okay. Ah, sorry. Perfect. Um, there we go. Okay, excellent. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, we're happy to um, share this work. I'm just going to uh, have a very few brief remarks kind of con contextualizing um, where this all came from. Basically, Jeremy and I were working on an NSF grant project where we wanted to run uh, online experiments, and uh, we were using um, IBEX. So you'll notice there's IBEX and then pen controller for IBEX or PC IBEX. Um, so IBEX was developed by Alex Drummond, and we saw almost half of you already um, used it in some form. And I think one of the great uh, advantages and attractive parts of IBEX for us was that you basically have instant free access. You don't have to set up a server, um, right? You sign in and the first experiment is there. Once your account is created, you load a sample experiment, you have a live link for participants. So it's a really great way of making uh, online experimentation very accessible. It's also a great tool for teaching that I use a lot where students just go right ahead and develop their own experiments. Um, IBEX, though, for our purposes, was not really quite versatile enough, or it didn't make it that easy to have versatile features. So once you want to display images, playback audio, and have sort of really fine-grained control over the trial structure, um, you can do it, but it's quite cumbersome. So pen controller was something that Jeremy um, wound up developing over time as we needed uh, these more flexible tools. Um, and long story short, what we try to do here is basically um, create a whole language of its own that operates on top of IBEX. Um, with the goal of, on the one hand, offering maximum flexibility um, while also trying to keep the complexity on the coding side um, as minimal as possible. And to make this little language that you have to learn, but it's really, you know, you'll get the basics today, um, uh, simple and transparent and intuitive in terms of defining what happens over the sequence of events of a trial. Um, Broadly speaking, IBEX as well as PC IBEX, it's uh, just the platform for running an experiment. So recruitment is a separate issue, though it's very compatible with lots of different recruitment um, platforms. Um, and we're going to focus just on the core workings of how the pen controller for IBEX part works um, today. 
Um, so we'll keep it relatively basic while um, also illustrating some of the key features and advantages we have here. Um, and uh, just as a couple of further uh, heads up, uh, partly we already shared this, so um, you're wel welcome to uh, go along as we try things here and, and you can have, be logged into your own PC IBEX account and try things out yourself. Um, but of course, you can also come back later to this tutorial, either in its written form and the handout or we have it on the webpage as well, of course, um, or the video from the webinar. And as you uh, dive deeper into things and need uh, more complex things happening, uh, we'll also point you to the full documentation on the website, as well as a forum that we have where we um, answer questions um, that come up. So um, I'm going to start here um, by just uh, giving you a taste of the sample experiment. So we're on the tutorial homepage. We're gonna jump ahead a little bit in a moment, but just to see what we're aiming for, here's the um, example. Um, experiment, so I have to type in an ID. The fish swims in a tank which is perfectly square. So we're going to hear a bunch of sentences and we have to select the picture. The deer in a wood which is extremely sparse. You see the text also displaying on the screen. You can also click the on the picture. The pen which is strikingly red. There's only four trials, so we're almost done. The moose done. walk in a park which is visibly old. And then we end uh, with a completion page where you have a link that you, know, you can supply for uh, the given platform you work with. So that's sort of the uh, overall goal of the experiment we're going to build here. Um, if you want to go along on the second page, getting started, um, you find a link here to GitHub, and that's what you use inside of Pen Controller um, once you log in um, on the PC IBEX farm. Um, so I'm switching here now um, to the uh, uh, IBEX farm account. I'm logged in. I have a tutorial experiment. And you'll see that under the update from Git repo here, you can click on uh, that part and uh, this window will open up. That's where I paste that link. And if you click sync, then you will get all the files you need for walking through this um, tutorial. Um, we're gonna jump right in and sort of start with the uh, basic uh, pieces of how things work in Pen Controller. Um, the core notion that everything uh, operates on um, is uh, the notion of element. So we create elements um, and those are the pieces that we work with and that we can carry out commands on. Um, we'll see all kinds of different elements. We'll start out with simple text elements, um, image elements, but also add audio elements. And if you could, we won't cover that today, also do video um, and other types of things. But also basic pieces of the trial structure, like adding a timer so to add a delay somewhere um, and other types of things just relating to, to uh, uh, events that should be happening on the screen or over the um, audio, all of that um, is going to be elements. So to illustrate that um, concretely, um, if we go to the core bit here, um, you'll see these little code windows. Um, this right here illustrates two key aspects of the experiment that we just showed you of what happens on the trial. Namely, there's going to be some text displayed um, and that's happening in the first line here that I'm highlighting. Um, and when you want to create an element here, we're creating a text element, um, you just uh, call the command new text and in parentheses and then in quotation marks, you have uh, the text that you want to appear. That creates this element, but it doesn't do anything with it. So uh, for the time being with this line only, it basically lives in the abstract. If we want something to happen uh, with that text, namely displayed on the screen, we have to call another command on it. Um, and this is here the print command. Um, notice the general structure of these commands. Um, they start with a period um, and then usually will have parentheses. Often these are empty. Sometimes they um, supply additional arguments to the function that you're calling. So the first two lines here create a text element and print it on the screen. Um, and then we move on to the next element and these elements are separated by a comma. So that's uh, a crucial uh, feature of all your code here that when you have a new element um, or later on will call back on a previous element, um, you have to separate the elements and the commands that go with them uh, with the comma. We like to put it in a separate line that's not necessary for the program, but it's easier for you to keep track of making sure that you don't miss any of these. Um, so then uh, quite obviously the same thing happens with the image here. Um, we create an image element. All the element creation happens with commands of form new x. So here we have new text and new image. Um, and in this case, the argument to the image um, element is a file that we're supplying. Note that this file um, lives in part of your um, project. We'll look at the interface um, later and uh, should be there if you're following along if you synced from GitHub 
all the files will be made available for the experiment and we can call them directly here. Just like with the text, the image has to be printed. Um, and so this is sort of the core of what happens during the trial, minus the audio and some other things, um, displaying text and displaying an image. <clears throat> Throughout, we have the uh, ability here to click on this Try It button. So if you click on that, you'll go to a new window that looks like this. Let me just zoom out so the view is a little bit better. Um, so this is really just for toying around and playing with the code, um, but it's quite useful as you're getting started. On the left here, um, you see the code that we just had um, in the tutorial, um, printing the text and image elements. And in the right, you can go through what happens when you execute that. So click here to retry, and then we see the image being printed and the text. And this is fully interactive, so you can comment outlines. Uh, so if I don't want to print the text, I can comment out the print here with these two forward slashes. And if I retry it, now you see only the image and not the text. And so this is a great place where you can sort of play around with the basic commands and how they work. Um, we're going to work in order to have the full functionality um, on the PC IBEX farm directly in the code, but the test uh, try it button is, is a nice way to engage in the tutorial um, directly. So this is the first bit here. Um, the uh, try it button simplifies things um, a little bit. So if we actually want to create a trial in the pen controller script, we're gonna have to um, further embed the text. So what you see in white here, those lines are just like we had before. Um, you have to embed all of that in the pen controller function. So basically any sort of screen that happens as your experiment moves along um, that can be interactive and have multiple status to it will be enclosed in these pen controller um, parentheses and we will have multiple of those um, later on. Um, so if you want to have uh, the simple experiment and create it on uh, the PC IBEX farm yourself, um, you can go to the IBEX farm um, once you uh, so introducing the interface once you've logged in, uh, you will see a list of your experiments. Um, again, I'm working on the tutorial experiment here. And um, when you scroll down here, there's all kinds of files, including the resources, all the audio and picture files, et cetera, that we'll be using. But we're just gonna start simple here um, with the main.js file. That's the main script file for the experiment. And if you click on that, uh, a window opens, and actually let me increase the zoom here a little bit so that you see a little better on the shared screen. Um, <clears throat> so there's nothing there other than some uh, uh, preliminary stuff that you should leave there. Um, we're going to start including the code that we just worked with um, underneath there. Um, so we have the uh, pen controller um, function here with the uh, new text and new image element and the print commands. Um, and this is all you need to do to actually try the experiment. If you wanna see what uh, the current setup looks like, you can click on the save and test button and a new tab will open um, and the experiment gets executed there. As you can see, um, stuff happens, but it's not exactly what we wanted yet because you weren't actually able to see a picture. What's going on is we're moving on straight ahead to this default final page that IBEX provides um, confirming that the results were sent. What happened to the picture? Um, well, this is actually a good illustration of the um, basic workings of uh, IBEX and, and pen controller for IBEX. Namely that uh, what's happening here, uh, right, is that the script gets executed line by line and it does so rapidly and without a pause um, unless you tell it to pause in any way. So going through here, it creates a text element, it prints it, creates an image element, it prints it, um, that's lines two through six, um, and then it's done, and when it's done, it moves on to the next thing. There is no next thing that's experiment specific, um, so uh, therefore it basically concludes that the experiment is over and it points you to this final um, screen that IBEX has built in as the sort of experiment completion screen. So what do we do to actually uh, ensure that, um, I'm going to hop down to the next code window here. Um, what do we do to um, hold the presses, if you like? Um, well, we have to um, wait for some input or tell pen controller to wait for some input. Um, and to do that, we have to define an element that can register input um, and then wait. And that's what we're doing in the next step here. If we're looking at the uh, uh, this next code window, um, you see the lines that we're adding to previously introduced script 
um, are both highlighted in green, at least on the web version, not in the handout maybe, um, but they also have these pluses, so those are the additions. Um, note again the comma uh, that we're adding here, and then we're creating uh, what we call a key element with a space um, between quotation marks, um, and then crucially, um, a wait command. So let me um, copy that over to um, our code window in the pen controller. So we'll go and right here. It's not to indent things consistently so we can keep track. Um, so what does this new thing uh, do? Well, the uh, key element is uh, something, an element that is uh, sensitive to keyboard input. Um, and we can tell it what keys to listen to in particular, if you like. Right now, we're just starting out with a space key. And crucially, the wait command that we add here um, actually tells it to not do anything until that key is pressed. So this will have the desired effect. If we do save and test at this point, um, we're opening the window. Um, now we see the text displayed. Uh, we see uh, the picture on the screen. Things don't look great yet, so we'll work on that. Um, but the elements are there. Um, notice also that while we're running through trials, by default, we have a debug window um, uh, turned on here. Um, luckily, right now, no errors are found. Um, for those of you that have used Ibex before, um, this is a lot more responsive than the error messages. Uh, items variable has to be defined that you may have seen many times that may drive you crazy. Um, the debug window here tells you relatively specific feedback, at least for many circumstances, of what's going wrong. It's not finding the file, some commas missing, or there's uh, some other issues with the commands you're using. Um, so we're going to have this on, but uh, the basic thing is we see the trial unfolding, and it will only end once I hit the space bar, and then we go on to the end of the experiment. Um, so this is uh, a step in the right direction. Now we're able to see how the creation of these elements and the printing of them on the screen works, and we also have our first input-sensitive um, element added to the script here. Of course, the experiment we showed you, the idea was that there's two pictures um, and two keys um, that you can press. Uh, press. Um, so here, the additions are relatively straightforward. Um, in particular, we add a second image element, um, and that we'll call a different um, different image. Let me just add that here. Um, and again, all the tabs and alignment is just for our own sake. Um, so you can keep track of things. So now we're adding two images. Um, and we're also going to change what we do in terms of the input that we want. Uh, if we want pictures uh, to be indicated as a response, as a match, let's say, for the sentence, um, we probably want multiple inputs. So F and J are a uh, reasonable choice here. So instead of the space bar, we'll add F and J. Um, these are now going to be the, the response options. This is basically specifying a set of options. So there's no sequencing here to these things. And each individual key is a possible input. Um, and furthermore, um, the uh, capitalization here does not um, matter. So the keys will work um, either way. So if we uh, do this now and save and test, um, this looks just the same. But notice, close the debug window, um, the second picture is there too. This is not yet a functional experiment. The layout is not really suitable, um, but we have all the elements um, that we want there. The layout is uh, precisely the next um, item on the agenda. So one of the things that's unfortunate with um, the way that the experiment is displayed right now is that the pictures are very large. And at least for smaller browser windows, you can't see both of them at once. Not ideal for the experiment. Um, so for that, we add a simple um, size command, setting size on the image elements. Um, and those will now govern how large the images that are being printed are. Um, so we'll put this here. Note the commands that go with the given element. They all start with the period. There's no comma separating them. That's exactly what tells pen controller that they're operating on the element uh, that they're appearing under. So we'll add this setting size to um, both of the images. Um, and if we do that and test again, I never pressed this one, so we weren't done, uh, you now see the images um, are small. They're still on top of each other, but at least we can see everything uh, in one screen. So ideally, we want greater control even um, over the layout here. 
Um, and the way that we can uh, exercise such control is through the very versatile and very powerful canvas element. So this is like a painting canvas. You define a space on the screen, and that screen you can do with whatever you want. You can refer to positions within that, um, uh, that part of the window or that canvas, and then add things to it um, successively. So uh, adding this element, um, there's a couple of changes we will make. First of all, notice that when we create the images, um, we don't actually want to print them right away. So I'm going to comment out the print lines here, and that precisely now has the effect that the images are not. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry. You're printing out the text. Just the image. Oh, right. Uh, um, that's right. Okay, Jeremy uh, is keeping up with my mistakes here. We want the images not displayed or not yet, um, because we want to do something else with them. We want to arrange them in this in this canvas. Um, and that's precisely what's happening in the new highlighted green part here. Um, so here we create a new element, um, a canvas element, new canvas, and we define its pixel size. So it's going to be 450 pixel wide and 200 high. Um, and then we add things to it with a settings add command. Um, and uh, the uh, addition here has to be specified in terms of the position relative to the canvas that we're creating. Um, so the first image will just be in the top left corner, so it gets the zero, zero coordinates. And then um, we uh, will retrieve the image we created earlier. Another change that's necessary for that, um, so now we create elements and then retrieve them later with the get commands. These are just like the new in terms of being paired with image or text or whatever element you have. So here we have get image, um, but in order to easily uh, refer back to the element previously cre created, we actually need to add um, a label. So here, the first argument of the new image command now is the label two. Um, so we can do that in our code here as well. Um, so we have uh, two as the label, and this is because there's two animals, two fish uh, in that image, um, matching the file name here, and the other one we'll call one. And with that in place, uh, we're now able to refer back to these images uh, as we're in the Canvas environment. And once we've added them to the canvas, we uh, add the print command. And so if we copy all of this now um, to our code, um, we get a nicer layout on the screen. Um, I think the comma was there. Um, so this is exactly what we want now in terms of the sequence of things happening. We create the images, then we create a canvas and place the images within that canvas. And once everything is in place for the canvas, we print the canvas. So we can again save and test. And you will now see that the layout is different. The images are next to each other. So basically, the canvas is created as a box uh, right in the starting of the next line under the text we put here. Um, and then within it, the images can now be in text. Um, again, I want to highlight um, just how versatile a tool this is. Um, you can have videos that are included here, and you can overlay things over one another. You can have text appearing on top of the video, um, option choices, key presses, et cetera, um, all kinds of things. Um, so it's really an extremely powerful and uh, flexible um, environment. So that's the uh, uh, first basic part here. Um, we uh, put text and images on the screen, and we get some control over how these things appear on the screen um, and have a lot of versatility. Um, furthermore, uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, we have uh, two types of commands relating to elements, creation commands with new plus x, where x is some element type, and then we can retrieve elements we created previously with the get x type of command, so like the get image. Um, so those are the key um, new features that we added here. This is just, of course, the very beginning. Um, so uh, we'll add additional pieces um, uh, as we go along and, and reach the sort of final state once we've worked through everything. Um, the next step we want to look at, and this is the next page in the tutorial, um, concerns the issue of actually collect collecting data and collecting input. Um, if you're running an experiment like this where they press a key relative to a picture they see, obviously you will want to have a record of what key they pressed. Um, by default, pen controller will automatically log when a start trial starts and when it ends. Um, but everything else, uh, you have to tell it uh, to collect data um, whenever you want to collect data. 
Um, so this is again sort of in the um, spirit of making the code extremely transparent. Whenever anything happens, you have to tell it uh, uh, for that to happen, to make that happen. Um, and that's the idea um, with collecting data as well. Um, all that said, it's very simple though, for a given input um, to be logged. All that we have to do is uh, to add the command settings log um, to the relevant element. That would be the key element here. So if we want to know what key was pressed and when, um, adding settings log right before the wait command um, will be, do exactly that. Uh, so when the condition imposed by the wait command that F or J is pressed is um, uh, carried out, um, when that takes place, the settings log command will ensure that all the information there um, gets collected. So um, I'm going to uh, add that to our code here. Um, the settings log. Um, and then I'm going to save and close that because now we're actually going to take a first look at the results file. And before we uh, do that, I'm going to, going to delete the results um, file that already exists from our previous run throughs because I don't have the relevant information in them. So scrolling down here on the main project page, you see that below the resources, we find the results section. And there's two files here, um, the raw results file and the results file. The raw results file is in CSV format and um, uh, easy to work with. So that's the one we're going to work with. We want to start with a, a clean slate. So we're actually just going to delete this file. It's going to ask us whether that really is what we want to do. Um, and having deleted it, we can now go back um, to our script file um, and uh, test the experiment again, just do a run through so we can collect some data. Um, so here's the display and I'm going to press the F key um, and that does the trick, the experiment is over. And now we can go back to the results file and actually see what the results look like. Um, notice that uh, the results don't show up quite yet. You actually have to refresh by clicking on the circle because the file just changed um, because there was a submission. And now here we have uh, the new file. So let's take a look at what the results file looks like. Um, the first thing to note is that there's all kinds of stuff here in lines that appear with the hashtag, and those are comment lines. So this is not something that you directly use as the results. Um, there is useful information here. We're not going to dive into it. Um, the numbered uh, list of uh, uh, names here, labels, is actually um, something that tells you about what columns you find between the comment. Um, but we're just going to look at uh, the uh, main results uh, lines from our one trial experiment here. So that's the lines 20 to 22. Um, and uh, it's, of course, not that easy to read in this format. You can download it and open it in a spreadsheet editor, and then you have a nice um, uh, table format. Um, what we're just going to focus on here, there's uh, currently going to be three lines for every trial. We only have one trial. Um, the first and the last. Um, towards the end, you find uh, information about what that line recorded. And this is just going to be the start and the end of the trial. And following it is a value, um, a timestamp. Um, the exact number doesn't really need to concern you. All that matters is their um, sort of relative uh, size. So here's a timestamp for the start of the trial and a timestamp stamp for the end of the trial. These are the two lines that automatically get recorded for any trial that gets executed by pen controller. Um, the settings law command that we added in uh, uh, is what makes the in-between line uh, get recorded. Um, and you will see here that um, you get information about uh, what sort of data was recorded. In particular, it's specified as a key press or pressed key um, value here. And the next, uh, between the next commas, you see um, the key that was pressed, um, namely the F key. And uh, then finally, you again get a timestamp. And this is already all the basic information you need. If you want to um, compute the reaction time or response time for this key press, you would simply subtract the start value from the key press value. And then you get the time uh, that passed between the display of the trial and the key press. Um, so this gives you a first sense of uh, what the results look like um, and also how we get results um, uh, uh, to be logged in the pen controller. Um, okay, so um, that is the key part about um, the first look at the results file. Um, all of this is in the tutorial as well, but I think I covered everything. Anything that I'm forgetting. Um, so in that case, we'll actually go on um, to the next section. 
Um, so again, we're building things sort of from the inside out here. So far, we just have one teeny tiny trial and a little bit of information. Um, for an entire experiment, typically you will want sort of some couching of the main experiment part um, and start out with a welcome screen um, and also have some final uh, completion screen. Um, and crucially, you will also want to collect some information usually um, about your participant. Um, so we're going to add these bits in here um, in the next uh, addition to the code. Basically, what we have to do here, right, is we want a page to display before you get to the actual experiment. Um, and so, like I said in the beginning, what uh, really is necessary for any sort of screen you walk through or any page you encounter um, on the, uh, uh, as the experiment progresses um, is you have to uh, create a pen controller environment. So we see the first and the last line here, um, again, with the pen controller and parentheses. And this now, in a sense, in a broad sense, uh, right, defines another trial, another uh, step in the sequence of events. Um, and all that we want to do here, let's say, is to just give a little bit of welcome text and some very basic instructions. Um, one uh, other new element to note in passing here is that uh, the first line specifies a default. Um, so while on the one hand, we think it's very good to be transparent and always have to write print when you want print to be te uh, uh, text to be printed on the screen, um, in certain cases, like this welcome page, just whenever you create text you want to be printed to the screen and you don't need to do that redundantly, specify that redundantly every time. Um, so if you're in a situation like that, you can use defaults. Um, again, the syntax here is hopefully rather transparent. Um, default text is the command you call in order to set defaults for text elements. You can do the same for image elements um, and other things as well. So if all your images are always the same size and you have lots of them on the screen, you can just set a default image and the setting size uh, command that we uh, already saw in the previous uh, part of the tutorial. So here we just uh, save ourselves the work of having to write print for every text element and just say whenever you count, encounter a text element, go ahead and print it. And then we add different text elements. One just says welcome. Um, then here, another thing to note on the next line is that uh, we actually make use of some HTML um, uh, code here. So we have the paragraph breaks added here and uh, as far as basic formatting of text is concerned, um, you can use these HTML tags to specify in the next bit of text that tells participants what to do, um, right? We have an additional use of the strong element here, um, which will make that appear um, in bold text. So uh, again, in total, we have uh, four text elements that we're encountering here um, in this pen controller environment. And then there is uh, yet another new element. Um, so let's say we want people to read this page and that um, they should click somewhere in order to start the experiment. So this is what the button element is for. Um, so we create at the end of the sequence of text elements that get printed to the screen, um, a button element, we'll give it a label um, start um, and we'll print it on the screen. And then again, crucially um, call the wait command. So this will now ensure that a button appears on the screen and the uh, execution of the overall script after this will come the uh, experimental trial information that we just created right the execution will wait until that button is clicked and only when it's done with that will it go on um, so to illustrate uh, how this works once we put it in our code i can just copy all of this um, and put it um, in our main script which i'll open back up here um, so uh, again what we already have is sort of the core of the trial events. Um, we want the welcome screen, of course, to happen before that happens. So I'm going to add some space here and copy the entire bit of code that we just looked at um, to uh, what we had before. Um, so uh, this is just, again, the code that we had. And we can uh, do save and test to test out the experiment. Um, close this. I mean, and you see the effect is just as we uh, uh, expected. You have separate lines, separate paragraphs, in fact, of text. You have some bold elements. The buttons to be pressed, F and J, are highlighted in uh, bold here. Um, and then we have a start button. And only when I click on that start button do we go on to the main experiment part that was the trial we specified before in the pen controller environment. And I can complete this by pressing um, the F key. Um, so this gives you a, a very versatile way of providing all kinds of information uh, on a welcome screen. Um, 
Another important uh, function that we will want in most types of setups is that uh, we want to have some type of identifier for our participants. That can be some anonymous code or an ID from uh, some recruitment platform like Amazon Turk or Prolific, um, or it could be their name if it's not an anonymous uh, type of setup. Um, so uh, that is a handy thing to include in this welcome screen um, as well. Um, and in order for us to collect that, we can create a text input element. So this will now be a little window where people can type in some text. Um, and that's exactly what's being done uh, in these lines right here. Uh, we create a new text input element and we call it ID and we print it to the screen. So I'll go back to our code um, and we're going to include this um, right before the start button. Um, so that now uh, means that we will have a text input field um, showing up um, on the screen. However, we uh, still have to add uh, some additional uh, behind the scenes work here um, because of course we want to make sure that we actually uh, collect the data that gets input there um, in the text field. Um, as things stand, nothing would happen with it. They can type stuff in and you can proceed, but the value of what they typed in is not uh, actually yet collected. In order to do that, we have to create uh, what we call a variable element. So here, um, VAR is the abbreviation for variable, uh, and we uh, call the, uh, create an element with new as usual. We call it ID, because that's what we're collecting here. Um, and then there's two additional pieces um, that now go a little, little bit beyond what we've seen before. Um, there's a special command here that says settings global, and that is basically ensuring that the value for this variable will be available at later times because we want to collect or add that value for convenience to the results file um, to every line. That way you know which data point came from which participant. So that's what the settings global command does. Um, and then finally, so far we've only created a variable. We have not specified what value it should actually have. Um, so here we use the set command um, and tell uh, the interface that the value of this new ID variable should be precisely the input from the get uh, the text input um, ID field. So here again we use this get command plus text input because we're referring back to a text input and then the label of that text input field, the ID field, um, and that way we are um, now ensuring that the input that people put there is actually recorded. Uh, or written to a variable for now. To record it, we're actually going to have to do um, one more step. Um, make sure I got the commas right here. There we go. Um, so we're adding this. Um, so now the um, variable um, is created, um, but we also want to um, uh, make sure that this gets written to the results file, and this is what this last uh, line that is uh, a little bit different than what we've seen before because it goes outside of the pen controller parenthesis in the second to last line here. This just um, ensures um, this log command that uh, we will add a column to the results file um, that is labeled ID uh, and will have for each trial that happens uh, whatever back, um, uh, value is supplied for the variable ID. Um, here we're going to leave that of course constant um, from the start and then we'll get the um, ID variable. So um, let me just add this as well. Should I change the order, Jeremy? Yeah, there is something you want to change. The, right now you create and set the var element with the wait yeah. command on the button so that wouldn't wait until the participant has entered anything in the input before setting the value of the var element. So that would be empty. Yeah. Great. So this is our usual uh, spiel. I do things and Jeremy finds the things I screw up. Um, so let me actually fix this. This is instructive. Um, what we need is uh, to um, make sure we get this a little bit prettier here. Um, so the variable should not be created, um, as Jeremy just said, until um, the um, button click happens because um, then it would already uh, write the value prior to the participants putting anything into the text input. So the order of commands is always really crucial in general in pen controller um, because that's just the order in which uh, uh, the commands get executed. So you have to think through that logic. Okay, so we can uh, once again um, save and test this. 
and just do a quick run through. I'll just provide some other value here and I'll click. Um, and we can now again go back to the results file um, and take a look just to see that the things we wanted to record are actually being recorded. Um, so there's still our earlier trial. Um, I'm going to scroll towards the bottom where we now get to see more information. Um, notice that the actual experimental trial hasn't changed yet. We'll work on that in a moment. However, there's a separate set of lines, namely these two here, um, which are created by having the um, uh, welcome page with the ID input um, in there. And we can see that we've successfully um, logged the ID in two ways. First of all, in the commented outlines, it tells you that the 13th column now is the ID column that we created um, with this log. Um, and furthermore, you see that the ID I typed in was FS2. Um, and uh, that's precisely uh, what we wanted to do. We now know who uh, is taking this experiment. Um, it's going to be handy when we have lots of results from lots of participants to also know uh, to have that va value recorded um, in every line of the results so we know which participant which result came from. So we would want to add this to the results line with the key press down here as well. Um, and that is actually um, rather simple. Um, so we just have to go back to our um, main file here and you can look at this um, in the um, script in the tutorial as well. And um, basically here we have a window with all of our code. So there's quite a bit now, normally we try to focus. All that we need to do to have the ID variable as well logged in the lines that correspond to the um, experimental trials uh, is that we have to use the same command that logs the value of the ID variable in the in a column called ID and the results for those trials as well. We'll add the log ID um, to the pen controller environment for the main trial, right? So this is the key part here. Um, we'll use that there as well. And once we do that, um, we're going to have that value in every line of the results. Um, and that makes it much easier to work with and, and analyze, analyze the results. Okay, so um, at the end of the experiment, right now what we see is we get this default completion screen um, from uh, that's supplied um, by IBEX. You may want more control over that for a variety of reasons. Um, and the logic of adding uh, something additional here is um, really exactly the same uh, as for the welcome screen. Uh, we just want to add a new pen controller environment that will then put on the screen whatever text you want to be there. So what we're doing here is we have this new controller uh, pen controller environment um, and then say thank you for your participation. And then we provide a link also in the text element um, so this is handy if you're working with a platform that allows you to have direct confirmation links where people get credit or get paid once they've clicked a certain link. If you put this at the end of your study, um, then they can click here um, and that does uh, exactly the trick so they can confirm that they've gone through the whole experiment. Another thing to notice here, of course, is that we really want to be sure that at the time that they click this confirmation link, the data has actually been saved and uh, everything, and they didn't close the window um, prior to um, the data being written to um, our server. So in order to do that, there's a function that's adapted from, from the basic IBEX essentially. Um, uh, uh, we have yet another line in the code here um, that effectively tells the program when to send the results. Um, so the way it's set up here is that after you've gone through the experimental trial, which is the pen controller um, element right above here, um, we're saying, okay, everything that you've collected now, send the results so that they are stored on our server. And once that is complete, then you go on to the completion screen um, that we just went over here um, at the end with the um, confirmation link. There's one last piece that's good to be um, aware of in that regard. And that is that if you have such a sort of custom made uh, uh, um, uh, page, especially one with the confirmation link that on which uh, their payment depends or their credit uh, depends, you don't want them to be able to go on um, past that, right? So effectively, we want to end everything here. And to do that, we're just using uh, basically a little trick here. Um, we're creating a button element and then require the system to wait for a click um, on that button. Um, but uh, because we don't actually want them to be able to go on, we never print that button to the screen. 
So now uh, the system in a sense is in a pickle, but uh, one that we want it to be in, uh, it's precisely that there's a button element there and it's waiting for input on the button element, but you couldn't possibly give input on that button element because there's no button to be clicked because we never put it on the screen. So that basically means nobody can go past this page and that's essentially um, what we want. So just to illustrate this quickly, let me um, add precisely these lines um, to the code um, that we have here. So this will be added at the very end of the experimental sequence here. Um, and if I got everything right, we can test this and that should work just fine. So we again have an ID, I'll just keep track of my number of attempts. Here's our um, core um, experimental screen. I'll press the F key and here we go. This is now our completion screen that we um, uh, just created that says thank you for your participation. Here is a dummy link. You obviously have to put your real link there, um, but that's a way to uh, allow participants to certify that they completed the experiment to whatever platform you're using and doing so after the results have been sent um, to our server so we know that everything got recorded. So this now sort of completes the overview of um, how to couch the experiment in a welcome and uh, completion screen and also collect some information about participants' IDs. Um, I'll note here just on the side that there's another kind of more elegant and efficient way of collecting IDs that works with many platforms. Um, some of these will allow you to pass a, a participant specific ID through the URL link that you give them to go to the experiment and you can set up pen controller to automatically grab that bit of the URL and write it to the results. Um, this is in the full documentation. It's actually, if anything, probably slightly easier than what we did, but conceptually a little harder because you have to work with the link generating interfaces of that sort. Um, but that's handy for those of you that, that work with interfaces like that. So we'll go on uh, to make things a little bit fancier. So the original experiment had audio added um, and, and not just um, text. Um, this is as simple as it could be. Um, audio elements are introduced like all elements with new plus the label of the element. So here new audio. And then again, we have a reference to a file and that file is in the resource section of your main project page and was imported to GitHub if you're um, playing along here. And uh, just like we have print for um, visual elements for audio and video, we have play, um, which does exactly what you would think it does. And um, once we add that, we will be able to now have audio as part of our main trial. So we're going to go um, here at the start of our pen controller main trial sequence um, and uh, separate that with a comma from the text element. Um, and that's all that's needed in order to add audio to the playback. So we can again save and test. I have to enter some identifier. The fish swim in a tank, which is perfectly round. So if you can hear that coming from my computer speakers, um, you now will see that the audio um, uh, works here. And it's really um, absolutely um, straightforward and simple. Um, there is uh, a little bit more uh, or more complex issues, I guess, in general arise once you have things that unfold over time, um, like audio. Um, and one of the issues is how you want the playback of the audio, which naturally takes time, to interact with choices uh, or input that the participants give, so key presses in this case. Um, basically, there's two options and you want to be able to explicitly control it. Um, one option um, is to say that uh, you want the audio to stop. You know, Maybe hearing part of the sentence is enough for some participants to make a selection and then the audio should just be done and not even complete. Um, so that's the first option we illustrate here. There's a couple of small changes. Uh, one, something we didn't do before is that uh, we didn't give a label to our new audio element. Um, so we'll call that um, description. That way we'll be able to refer back to it um, later on. And the other bit um, is that uh, once a key press has been made, we tell the system to do something. Um, we wanted to do something on the audio element. So we're going to um, uh, get the audio element we created at the beginning. And then we simply execute a stop command. Um, and that way, um, make sure I get this in the right place here. Um, that way, once uh, a key has been pressed, again, the sequence of the lines here is crucial. 
once the key is pressed, um, the audio will stop. And we can try that out. Let's reload the experiment. The fish swim in it. So you see now I press the key um, right in the middle as the audio was playing back, and then the uh, playback just stopped. Um, you may also be in an opposite situation. This really depends on your experiment. Um, and uh, instead, what you might want is that even if you press a key prior to um, uh, the audio playback being done, you may want it to continue. And in this case, we will use a wait command, um, in a particular version of the wait command, um, namely uh, a wait first command. Uh, this is because there's sort of complex interactions of possibilities of when the key press happened. Um, if you actually listen to the end of the audio and press a key afterwards, then there will be no completion event of audio playback happening anymore. Um, so that would mean a simple wait wouldn't be satisfied. The special element here that we're using first basically ensures that make sure that at this point in the code, it's the audio playback has completed, either because it was completed before the key press or if the key was pressed prior to the end of the audio, um, just uh, keep on playing the audio until it's reached, reached its completion. Um, so uh, we'll try that out in our code. Um, this will replace the stop command. And um, now you will see that if we um, save and test, the fish swim in a tank, which is perfectly round. I press the key, the um, uh, playback of the audio will actually um, go on. Um, there's a couple further um, features here that we built in. Um, one is uh, not maybe something that's entirely standard, but a nice illustration of the versatility of the system. So if you recall in the original presentation of the experiment, um, basically uh, what we got um, was that uh, uh, the text unfolded with the audio. Um, so we have an unfold command that you can use instead of the print command uh, that takes as its argument a millisecond value for uh, the time uh, that over which the text should unfold. Here we matched it with the duration of the audio file. And um, so if we go in and we place print on the text um, up here with um, unfold and a value in milliseconds, um, if we take a look at this again, you will now see the text unfolding. The fish swim in a tank, which is perfectly round. So note again that the unfolding here is very basic. It's pretty well aligned with the audio, but it's just kind of roughly working out because the speech speed is uh, relatively constant there. Um, again, we just make the unfolding match the overall duration, and that's the little um, trick that we're pulling here. So there's lots of dynamic features you can build in here, and you can find more about these things in the documentation. A more crucial feature that probably everybody will want at some point or another is that you may have uh, uh, want the ability of multiple options or different options for selecting a key, uh, selecting an image, sorry. Um, one option is to select it by key press, um, like we've set it up so far, but you may also want people to be able to click on the image. Um, and that's the uh, next uh, elaboration that we're making here. In order to allow that, we add what we call a selector element which again uh, does exactly uh, what you think it, uh, it does. Um, it will give you some set of alternatives and amongst those you can make a selection. Um, so it's going to be invoked by new selector. Um, we're going to get rid of the new key element because the key presses will be sort of worked into the selector element. Um, the selector has to be told what the options are, what you can select from. And here again, we're going to use the um, um, uh, get image command in order to uh, get back to the images we added to the canvas earlier. So get image labeled two and get image labeled one. Um, if we want to also allow key presses still, uh, we can now use the settings keys command here um, with F and J um, as an addition. And we sort of try to align this to make clear which key press corresponds to which picture. Um, and uh, then we want to, of course, uh, log what selection was made. So that's where the settings log command again comes in. And we want to wait until a selection has been made. Um, so the selector takes over the role that the key element had before. And if we add all of this, um, we now have a nice um, other way of um, selecting an image. 
just align everything here so it looks a little nicer. Um, so this is again just copying over what we had before. And um, again, the first row makes sure that you're able to click. If you want key presses to be an option, you can also have the second one and then there's alternative options. So we can try this out. Um, again, running through the experiment. The fish swim in a tank, which is perfectly round. And another interesting thing to note here is that um, you may want control over whether or not people can change their minds in terms of the selection that they're making. Um, so it wasn't quite fast enough, but I can try again. Um, the way it's set up right now, um, the fish it will actually a tank, which is perfectly round. allow me, if you could see the little box changing there from one image to another, that was me clicking on the two images, um, highlighting on the screen which choice I made, and I could change my mind, and I can go back and forth until, of course, everything uh, goes beyond that. Um, for some tasks, that may be perfectly appropriate, um, but for other situations, um, you may not want that. And if you want to preclude that possibility, there's a simple additional command on the selector element that's called settings once. And if we add that, then that ability um, will be precluded. Let me put that before wait. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, just making sure Jeremy is the one that knows all the technical details best. Um, okay, so if you do this and try it out, um, then you will no longer be able to uh, switch things around in terms of the selection. So this now looks a lot more like the uh, experiment that we were actually going for. The actual structure of the trial is uh, just like in what we saw in the beginning. Uh, you have audio playing back, you have the text unfolding, you have the two image choices, and you can select those either by clicking or by pressing um, some keys. Um, and so that's already well and good. Um, but of course, the entire setup here is still overly simplistic in that it's a one trial experiment. And typically, our experiments will have more than one trial. And uh, we want to now move on to the next part here, um, which uh, basically goes over what we do conveniently to add a whole bunch of trials. The basic idea is, of course, um, an extremely simple one. Um, given that a trial is created by adding pen controller, you could just keep adding pen controller um, elements to our script. Um, over and over and change all the relevant information. Um, and then you would have a sequence of experimental trials of that sort. But that is going to be really cumbersome if you have say 72 items and you're gonna keep copying and pasting those. And then when you're done with it, you come back and say, well, actually I wanted to add something else in between here or uh, I forgot the settings once and now I'm gonna have to add that uh, in everywhere. Um, so when we have a long sequence of trials that are all exactly following the same format, and only differ in terms of having uh, some elements change, like a different text and different sentences, um, and so on and so forth. Um, the sensible thing to do, of course, is to uh, define a template, um, and then uh, define that template in such a way that it can be fed values for all the things that change, the variable things, um, and uh, be able to uh, specify that separately, and then go through all the, the iterations. So if we look at the code that we have, um, basically the variable pieces here are the sound file, um, the text, and the two image files. And in order to create um, a template, what we're going to do um, is the following. Um, we will um, replace all the occurrences of those concrete examples, like a concrete sound file and a concrete text description, et cetera, and uh, add variables here. Um, so we're going to name them in a transparent way, uh, variable auto file, variable description for the verbal description, um, variable for the two types of um, image files. Um, and that's uh, the only change that we've made in the main uh, uh, part of the uh, pen controller trial that here that we've worked with. Um, the additional step to make sure that this actually works as a template is that we have to tell pen controller that this is now a template and so for that, there's a special bit of code here at the beginning, um, the pen controller template environment that then specifies that um, this is sort of a variable format and the pen controller um, specification here is now um, uh, right, uh, specifying a general pattern and needs to be supplied with values for the various uh, bits of that pattern. And we'll get to where that information comes from in just a moment. So again, the only changes here are remove the concrete text and audio files, replace them with variable names, um, and then embed the entire thing in this pen controller template environment. Um, 
for simplicity and speed, I'm just going to care, uh, copy over this entire window, even though most of these things did not change. Um, but it'll be harder for me to screw up if I do it this way. Um, so I'm just going to replace the entire pen controller trial that we had before um, with this. Um, so that's now exactly the bit that we went over um, on the tutorial page. Um, and uh, with that in place, um, we can actually go out and test things. And you don't know yet exactly how everything works, but I'm going to just show you what it looks like. The fish swim in a tank, which is perfectly round. The deer runs in a wood, which is extremely dense. The sheep roam in a pen, which is strikingly blue. The moose walks in a park, which is visibly new. And now you see we have um, a sequence of four trials here. Um, and this is because we're getting all these different um, variable values um, to fill in for the different uh, types of trials. Now, of course, you will ask yourself, where do those um, values come from? And going back to the uh, tutorial, um, the simple way of specifying this is in a table. Um, so if you sort of explore the resources section of your main project page in more detail, you'll find that there's a comma separated value or CSV file called full design. Um, and that page, uh, that, that file um, is right in CSV spreadsheet format, um, precisely the specification of all your trials, um, of all your items in the different um, variations. Um, so the, uh, you have to scroll through here. If you look at it on the website, on the handout, I think it's cut off somewhere, unfortunately. Um, but right, the illustration here is clear. It's just that there's a column that specifies if you're executing an item or a trial that's based on this row, here's the sound file, um, here's the text you should um, display, here are the image files. And then we have uh, some additional columns um, that give us more specific information about um, the identity of the trial. Um, so uh, one thing you can see at the end is that we have the duration of the sound file specified. Um, so that helps with the unfolding there. We need to re uh, reference that um, value. Um, we also have an item identifier. So the first two are variants um, with uh, fish, right? And then the variation that you probably picked up on is whether or not um, there's an inflection S um, on the sentence. So we see it in the description here, the fish swims in a tank versus the fish swim in a tank. Um, and uh, this is also encoded in the column ending. So that's our independent variable and the values it takes um, with the final S present or not present. Finally, um, notice that this uh, table specifies eight rows, but we only saw four trials in our experiment. And that's because, as is commonly done in, in counterbalance, counterbalancing setups, um, we want each individual participant to only see each item in one variation. So either with S or without S. And in order to ensure that, we added this group column and that plays a special role in pen controller when you have a column named group like this. So here we uh, basically say um, that participants will be assigned a group, just how, see the full documentation basically. We don't quite have time to look into that, um, but it happens in an automated uh, counterbalanced way in IBEX. Um, and based on what group you're assigned to, you will either only see the A columns that are highlighted here, or you will only see the B columns that are white here. Um, and that way you will see um, four of these um, trials. So uh, if you want to um, edit this, again, you can uh, go to your main project page and actually find the full design file in the resources somewhere towards the bottom here, right here. We can click on it. This is, of course, not a great interface for editing this file. Um, but you can, for that reason, also upload files here. So the various buttons underneath, um, the second one from the right with the arrow pointing up, that's where you can upload a new file to the resources. If you want a new sound file, a new image file, that's exactly um, how you would do it um, here. Um, so you can edit your design specification in a table um, and uh, save it as a comma separated value file, a CSV file, and then upload it here. Um, and that way you could manipulate exactly what happens on all the uh, individual files. Um, so that's basically um, the key for keeping track of um, uh, what's happening on multiple trial experiments and going through um, all these different variations using the template specification. Um, there's one last uh, piece that we want to um, cover here, um, and that is all this nice information we have in the um, table that we specified. 
outcome, right? We want to keep track of that, but we have a given line on the results file with multiple trials. Now there will be many. And we want to know well, what sentence was used here and what was the image displayed, what condition was it in. Um, so precisely that information that we have in the table should be showing up in the results file in order for us to easily interpret um, the results. Um, so that again is actually uh, only requires a very simple addition. Um, it's completely parallel to the way that we logged the participant ID that we got through a text input field in the beginning by adding this log and then a column name and the value where the value comes from um, to the end of the pen controller sequence here. In order to do this for every trial, uh, we add uh, corresponding log commands for item ending in group. So these um, will be uh, the, so the call to the variables here will basically reference the table and what line the, the values in the table for the uh, columns that are named item ending in group um, from the design CSV file um, and will then add it to the results file um, with all uh, in columns with the labels ID, item, ending, uh, and group uh, to track all of this information. So we can just copy these three lines here. That's all that's needed um, to the end of our um, main script file. Um, let me scroll to the right place, so right under the ID part. Um, we add these things here. And uh, we'll just take a quick look. We'll do a run through. We actually delete the previous results because then we can see the results more easily. Okay, so uh, now we'll just do one more run through again with the new addition of tracking all this information uh, supplied from the table. So I'll say save and test. Um, call it F as final. The fish swims in a tank which is perfectly square. The deer run in a wood which is extremely sparse. The sheep roams in a pen which is strikingly red. The moose walk in a park which is visibly old. Now it would have been nice to stop on key press. We could have done it more quickly, um, but we changed that. So um, now we have some results. Again, we have to um, reload, refresh to see this results file. Um, and uh, here is now exactly um, the information from the four trials that we took. Um, and each trial has uh, three lines associated with it, just as before, one for the start of the trial, one for the end of the trial, uh, and one for the key press. Um, so you can find these things. Um, again, this will be easier when you open it in a spreadsheet um, editor. Um, the, so here's the start and end uh, values. And uh, we now have all kinds of additional information, um, uh, selection and which picture was selected and the time. We have the um, ID that I entered, FS final was what I used. And crucially, we now have for every line here, um, also the additional values for what item did you see? The one that we labeled fish. What condition did we uh, see it in? Um, the one where there was an S in the end. And uh, then what group were you run in group A? And you find this for all of them. So here's the deer item, which we saw in the no S variant, um, and the sheep item in S variant, and so on and so forth. So all these pieces of information coming from the table are now being kept track of um, in the uh, results file, and that makes it much easier to analyze the data. Um, so that is sort of the core setup of all the main ingredients. We have now recreated the experiment um, as we saw it right at the beginning with all the uh, pieces unfolding uh, text, the audio, picture selection, and uh, multiple trials where the information is fed um, from a table. Um, so I think basically we're going to uh, wrap it up there and leave things at that point. Maybe just a few final comments. Um, in the tutorial, including the handout that you got, um, there's uh, two more sections that we just knew we wouldn't have time to get to um, that cover other important ingredients, but you can hopefully work through those um, in a helpful way um, on your own. Um, the next section, uh, on the one hand, adds some timers. If you want some buffer time between trials, uh, you can create timer elements and let those run for a certain amount of time. Um, and uh, furthermore, it specifies various ways in which you can randomize things, which of course is a key ingredient of um, good experimentation. Um, this is all relatively straightforward and builds on the capacities of the core IBEX. So if you've used IBEX before, um, there's not that much new there. And then the final part of the tutorial um, gives you some 
basic example scripts for analyzing uh, this sort of data in the uh, statistical software R. About half of you, I guess, have worked with R. Um, for others, you may want to dive into that, or if not, you can just download the CSV results file and uh, um, analyze it in whatever way you want in the spreadsheet editor um, or, or other ways. That's relatively straightforward. So we've tried to sort of, uh, you know, give you the core functionality and illustrate um, how things work. Um, and uh, Pen Controller can do many more things. Um, some of the highlights are that, for example, it's easy to record audio um, with Pen Controller, which may be of interest for uh, people working on certain topics in prosody or phonology um, or whatnot. Um, sociolinguists um, might also find great use for that. Um, and there's really uh, kind of no end to the possibilities. Uh, again, the full documentation illustrates uh, much of what you can do with it. Um, we try to keep up with all the coverage there, um, but don't be shy to ask questions on the forum. Um, and as a final word for those of you that are more experienced and know some programming or have, you know, are advanced in working with these types of things, um, all of this, just like IBEX was, um, is open source and it's fully extendable. So if you want to add on functionalities and uh, add code to the language uh, that Pen Controller uses here, um, then you are more than welcome to do that. We're very happy if you share um, things like that with us so we know about it. Um, but it's a completely open and extendable um, interface. Um, so I think that's all we have, unless Jeremy has anything to add, and then we'll be happy to um, answer any questions that come from the participants. Thank you, guys. And uh, just as a reminder for those of you in the audience, if you have questions, you can ask them using the questions widget on your dashboard. So should we start addressing some of the questions? Ah, sure. Yeah. Um, so there was a question about uh, self-paced readings. Um, the original IBEX platform was actually developed with uh, self-paced reading tasks in mind. Um, so there is no pen controller specific command that you can use for uh, this kind of tasks. But if you already know IBEX, um, you, there are standard IBEX ways of implementing a, a self-paced reading task. And everything in Pen Controller is retro compatible with uh, native IBEX. So if you just you know, go back to the uh, initial IBEX documentation, you can actually um, implement a self-paced reading uh, in this way. So I see one question about where's the handout. I think David will make that available, although I should say um, the uh, everything that's in the handout is on the website. Um, so the website is pcibex.net. It's net, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, from there, you can click to the tutorial, and that's exactly the tutorial. That's in fact what I walked through. I just looked at the browser window, um, and you have the try it buttons there, so you can work through everything directly um, there. Yeah, there should be a handout widget in your um, go to webinar dashboard, and that's where you'll find the handout. If you don't see the handouts widget, um, we'll have this on the LSA website, and we'll send around a link later on. Is there a way to see the full questions? Can we make yeah. the oh at the bottom? Okay. So <laughs> uh, there was a question about uh, Lycus curls. Uh, so there is, uh, as you saw in the tutorial, the uh, Penguin works in terms of elements. So we saw text, key, image. Uh, there is a scale element, so you just create a scale element. You can give the number of buttons you want to use, and by default, it you know displays as a radio button scale, so it's basically the equivalent of the Likert scale, and that's how you would do it. 
just don't forget to print it. You can call wait on it for um, halting the execution of the script until you know the participant clicks one of the buttons. And also don't forget to add settings log so that you can uh, retrieve the value that was selected. And another uh, point in that regard is that, uh, again, for, first of all, all of this is you know, in the documentation to try these things out, um, but also uh, the flexibility in uh, both the, just the visual layout of your scale, but also if you want to have um, individual labels on individual buttons or maybe have something in, underneath the middle radio button and, and things at the end, all of this um, is rather flexible. Um, and uh, beyond what we've shown you here, um, there is full capacity to make everything prettier and look nicer and design the aesthetics of and the look of things um, using CSS. Um, that's uh, uh, you know, a little bit more advanced if you're not otherwise familiar with um, web programming. But uh, again, the documentation shows you um, a lot there. Um, there's a question about audio. Do you want to talk to Sure. That so uh, by default, Pen Controller tries to preload Let's all of the. Mention the Let's mention the question first. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, there was a question about um, the kind of issues you can have with audio files, and in particular, uh, if uh, there is a long preloading period. Um, so by default, Pen Controller tries to preload every resource that you use, so images, audio files, uh, videos. Um, and the default behavior is that before a specific trial starts, if that trial uses um, resources, then uh, pen control will try to preload everything before starting the trial. If you want to wait until all of the resources used by all of your uh, trials are preloaded before starting the the experiment, you can. There is a special command for that that is in the documentation, which is called uh, uh, check preloaded. Yes, it's pen control check preloaded that you can use. Um, so yeah, it's it's actually implemented in IBEX, so that shouldn't be a problem with audio. So this is another good general point. So by, by preloading right, the general background, and this is true of IBEX in general, uh, is that um, all the JavaScript, um, or the entire script and all the resources, everything that gets ex executed, right, gets downloaded to the participants um, interface. So the worst thing that can happen is that if somebody has a slow internet connection, it might take a while for them to get started on the experiment. But um, once they have everything, everything, uh, the only thing that could impede the speed and progression of the experiment, and this also relates to uh, the quality of uh, the, the precision, precision for recording response times and such. Right. All, the only limit to all of that is the um, uh, local computer that people are using on their own. If somebody has a very old and slow computer, maybe then things are lagging a bit. But um, basically, it's as good as it can be on that computer because everything gets downloaded, and they only in, interact with the materials and the trials. Um, uh, when everything is at the ready locally, all the files. So therefore, there shouldn't be any delays that would mess up the progression of a trial as it happens for a participant. Yeah. And the same goes for videos, by the way, right? Where the uh, file size issues may be even larger. So you can include videos in the controller trials. And it's the, the same story that um, by default, it will preload and it should preload and there won't be any delays during the trial. And when you test your experiment, if you happen to see a very long uh, loading message, chances are that you maybe um, made a mistake in your file name. So if you do that, uh, of course, pen control won't be able to download the file because you know it doesn't exist. Uh, so you won't really have an error message because it could still be that pen control is trying to preload the file. It just takes a very long time. So just make sure you know if, if you just see a very long preloading message, just check uh, the file name. This that you're using in your script. So there's another question about where the experiments are run. And apparently there were some speed issues with the testing server, which I assume refers to the try it um, part. Um, so there's uh, many aspects to that question. Um, the simplest answer, though, is that the PC IBEX farm is a place where you can run the experiments. Um, this is still our own IBEX farm for, for the pen controller that adds capacities you don't have on the standard IBEX farm that many of you may be familiar with um, because it's securely hosted and it allows you to upload your file resources directly um, uh, and so on. Um, but we haven't extensively tested it. Some people have started running experiments on it and we'll have to monitor um, the supply of bandwidth and making sure that uh, lots of things happening in parallel works out fine. Um, 
More broadly, though, um, unless you're doing more advanced things, you can take all of this and run it on the um, IBEX farm that Alex Grumman still provides. A lot of people uh, run experiments um, there. Um, but you can also uh, create your own instance. So this goes in multiple ways. You can, um, if you're savvy and um, into these things, you could uh, have a local server running on the computer that you're using. So that way you could use these things in lab as well. It doesn't have to be done um, over the web. Um, or more involved, you could run your own IBEX server um, and set it up um, over the web. Unless you know there's special reasons for that, I'd probably caution against it. Um, but in principle, um, everything uh, uh, can go right through the IBEX farm, either the original one, um, although there's a few more steps there involved in order to be able to use all the pen controller resources and files. Um, on the PC IBEX farm that we were working here right now, you're ready to go and everything you saw during the tutorial, uh, I created it from scratch uh, with the sync from GitHub um, and you can run things there. And again, sort of highlighting what I said in the beginning, I think it's one of the uh, big selling points of uh, the IBEX setup in general, um, that you have this capacity that all you need to do is go to the, say, the PC IBEX um, farm webpage, create uh, an account, and you're ready to go. Um, as soon as you create an experiment, there's a link for that experiment that you can share with the world in whatever way you like. Um, so it's a very low to no entry hurdle for getting experiments um, set up, and then that's exactly where you can run up to. Uh, there was a question about uh, randomizing the items in the experiments. So uh, I think it means randomizing the order of presentation of the different trials. Um, I think Florian mentioned it briefly uh, at some point. Go on, um, let's go to it. But there is a, a whole section uh, uh, on the tutorial that's uh, section eight, right? Um, that yes. addresses the question of how you can um, actually give labels to your trials. And once you label your trials, you can play with that, use the labels to say, I want to randomize all of the trials that have a label corresponding to such label. Uh, and that's how you would do it. Uh, Pen controller uses the uh, native IBEX um, functions to randomize trials. So uh, you can look it up. So you can open, of course, the tutorial. There is an example there for uh, randomizing um, the trials. So without going through everything here, I'm just, I pulled up the relevant bit of the of the next page of the tutorial. Um, so what we see here is, um, I can it. I can it. I, oh yes, you can, sorry. Yeah, I thought the screen was still live. Okay, Great. <laughs> that's good. Thank you. Um, so uh, there's a, a command pen controller sequence. This is similar um, to commands you, you may know from IBEX. Um, but basically each of the pen controller um, trial elements here, right? So the first welcome screen, we now gave a label welcome. And in the sequence, you just tell it now the order in which things appear at, right? So you could diverge from the order in which you linearly specify it. So that's that's one bit. But the crucial part that goes to the randomization question, it's actually very simple. It says after the welcome uh, screen, go to the experiment um, part. Uh, so that's the main pen controller bit that we work with. And then you just call, and this is again, like Jeremy said, a function that's that's made available by IBEX in general, um, the, the function randomize. And that's all you need in order to randomize the order of the items um, that are of the experiment uh, type. So your main experimental um, items. There are more um, options for that um, that give you uh, more flexible control about how you do that. All of that is just like in IBEX, and we point to the IBEX documentation. Um, but long story short, that's the answer to the question. Um, you just specify the event sequence in pen controller sequence and then call randomize on the relevant bits you want randomized in order and that will do it. Right. Um, and there was another question about the refresh rates of the participants' computers. Um, does pen controller um, come with a function to uh, compute the refresh rate? Um, the, the answer is no, there is no uh, built-in function. I'm actually thinking of maybe implementing one. I was uh, wondering if I would do it for the release that uh, the version 1.4 pen controller that I released uh, earlier this week. Um, I didn't have a, a very good idea of how, uh, you know, how, how much people would uh, appreciate such a feature, we would, uh, what use people would make of it. So I didn't include it. Um, now that I see that at least someone wants to have it, I think I'll do it uh, later. 
Uh, and uh, I want to encourage you to actually go on PCIbex.net uh, in the support section, which is the forums. There is a request section. There is a, a three different sections, I think, in the forums. Um, support, APQ, and request. Uh, please, if you have any questions, any requests, uh, use the forums. This way, everyone can see it. If you have a problem that someone else might run into later, um, this way, you know, future users will have a, a topic that they can look up. And I try to be uh, responsive to answer promptly. Uh, and also, it really helps me having, you know, uh, feedback from users to uh, implement changes for the future releases of Pink Controller. Yeah, so I pulled up the uh, support site here, um, and yes, we're absolutely open to requests. This page, it's, or this whole uh, hosting is all still pretty recent. The pen controller we've been uh, developing for a long time, but uh, having set up the website and the own server here is, is relatively recent. So there aren't any requests yet, but I'm sure there are many feature requests out there in the world. So by all means, don't hold back, and we will do what we can and update uh, uh, accordingly in the forum here in terms of what gets implemented when. And one last uh, comment, there, there were a few questions about how do you implement this or that? So for example, the, the scale question, the Likert scale, uh, the answer was use the scale element. If you have to have, uh, if you want information uh, about this uh, element, uh, there is a documentation on the main website, pcibex.net, so Florian is actually opening it right now. And there is a menu on the right listing the different elements that exist. So if you want more information on the scale element, just click on the scale element section. Um, and there you will see that you can have, uh, you can show your scale as a radio button scale, but you can also transform it into a button scale where you can click on some text in the labels, but you can also convert your scale into a slider, just kind of things. Um, so it, it's, a, the documentation is actually pretty useful. So here you see one of the examples on the trial that says right now I'm very hungry or not hungry at all. And you can click a button and then uh, that's it. So this is the sort of stuff you can find and try out right away and play around with to see whether it's the right sort of thing. You see there's lots and lots of elements here. Um, and um, you can also search the forum. Uh, sometimes it's easy to find things that way. And there's um, a search but, button on the uh, top right corner of the... This right. No, no, yeah, this is sorry. your browser. Oh, yeah, 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 right. They're just there. So oh, oh the, it's cut off because I uh, have my screen kind of small. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, so you can do that. Great. Um, so uh, yeah, I think we've gotten to all the questions that have gotten submitted so far. Um, again, we're happy to answer other questions through the forum anytime. Uh, you can also email us. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, this is well, you know, a lot has gone into this uh, by now already. Um, it is still work in progress. Um, another thing that we hope to add more up to the um, website is to provide um, sample experiments of all different sorts. Um, again, um, ultimately, this will work in exactly the same way as the sample experiment we went through here, where there is a GitHub link, and you can just sync the project um, from GitHub to have a local instance. So you know, if everybody starts doing that, and we obviously encourage all of you, if you start using this, um, to make your IBEX code uh, available on GitHub, um, right then, uh, replication is uh, extremely simple because all you need to tell someone, or you can put it on your website, or we're happy to share it here, um, is that this experiment was run with the code on GitHub here. If you want to rerun this experiment, then you just have one click and you have it ready to run on IBEX. It's extremely um, efficient that way. But we want to supply more sample experiments to sort of illustrate how different things uh, can be done. And uh, so, now keep checking the website for developments and new additions there of that sort um, as well. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Florian and Jeremy, um, for sharing your time and expertise with us. Um, I think we've gone through all the questions. Is that right? I believe so. I think we got everything. Okay. And thanks uh, very much to all of you for taking time out of your day to be with us um, in the audience, that is. And we'll have a recording of this webinar available probably later today, but definitely no later than Monday. And we'll send around an email when it's ready. Thanks again, everyone, and have a terrific weekend. Bye-bye now. Thank you, David. Bye.